I think it's about time I reviewed a GoPro. Let's do this. Ginger Runner. What is up, everybody? Ethan Newberry, the Ginger Runner here for another GingerRunner.com review. And today I'm very excited of reviewing a product that I don't normally review on this channel from GoPro. It's the GoPro Hero 5. You guys have been asking for this one. And your first question might be, why is this running channel reviewing a GoPro Hero 5? Let me tell you, nearly five years ago, I purchased this, the GoPro Hero 3 Plus. This has been my workhorse camera in all of my runs for the last five years. I haven't had a single problem with it. It's documented more of my life than any other camera that I've ever owned. And almost every single running movie that I've ever created on this channel uses footage from this camera. I haven't needed to replace it. Only time in any of my ultras that I've run where I've used a different camera would be when I used the session, which was donated to the channel by one of our awesome viewers. And the arrival of this actually coincided with the final failure of the Hero 3 Plus when it finally just gave up on me after five years of hard use. This camera shaped this channel and really changed my life. And I cannot tell you how excited I am review this. And now I also want to tell you how this review is going to differ from other reviews on the web. First of all, I consider myself a GoPro power user. I've used these GoPros for years, documenting in all sorts of conditions, having to use all different setups, handheld, selfie stick, gimbal mounted, chest mounted, head mounted, mouth mounted, bike mount, everything. My goal has always been to catch the highest resolution, most versatile footage that I can, and to make it as stable and smooth as possible. That's always been a challenge. Other reviews from tech bloggers and the like will have a lot more technical data, a lot more comparison comparisons for you, but they're not necessarily using the GoPro on a daily, weekly basis for their entire lives, and it's not a camera that helped shape their careers. So I think this is a unique perspective that some of you will hopefully benefit from, especially for those of you who are looking to document some of your runs, some of your adventures, backcountry expeditions. Hopefully some of the information that you gather in this review will help you determine whether or not you need to buy the Hero 5, stick with the Hero 4 if that's what you have already, or previous GoPro versions or other action cameras. And honestly, one of the number one questions I get asked on this channel what is your gear? What do you shoot with? Well, for years it's been this, but as of a couple of months ago, it won't shoot longer than 10 seconds and you're even lucky if it manages to save the video. So I'm looking to retire this camera now that the new version is out with so many cool features, which I'm going to talk about right now. Hero 5 shoots 4K, 2.5K, all sorts of resolutions, all sorts of frame rates. That's not necessarily new. There's lots of videos and reviews out there that will talk specifically about those, show you good comparison. All that stuff's been covered, but here's why this camera was important for me in my creation process. These are the features that I really like, I'm excited about, and are game changers for me. Let's get on with the features that I like about the new Hero 5. Internal electronic image stabilization. There are some action cameras on the market that do feature some sort of image stabilization. It is a built-in feature that takes the image that you're shooting, crops it, and stabilizes it in camera. In my previous videos with my previous cameras, I do a lot of that in post-production using a warp stabilizer, some sort of post-production effect. It doesn't always work. A lot of the times the footage looks wobbly, warped. It's not an end-all solution. And it takes a ton of render time on the post-production side of things. The fact that they've now included image stabilization within camera is a huge benefit if only to remove some of that time used in post-production. It'll never be as smooth as holding a gimbal or having some sort of electronic stabilization device on the exterior of your camera while you're shooting, but it is an absolute nice plus to have. If you're shooting at 2.7K, you're gonna get image crop. What you're about to see is footage that I shot with and without the new Hero 5 image stabilization. Here is a shot of me running on a flat surface without image stabilization. You can tell that it's fairly shaky. And here is a shot internal image stabilization activated. It definitely removes shake, not all of it. Here's that same shot with internal image stabilization, now with warp stabilizer added in post-production. As you can see, it's usable. I am okay with losing my overall size of image, especially since I'm only exporting for the web. I do realize that the new Hero 5 also has a stabilizer system, the Karma, which I'm gonna talk about later in this review. So using that gimbal system won't completely make internal image stabilization obsolete, but it will definitely contribute to making a far smoother on rails type of footage. Let's move on. Linear field of view. GoPros are renowned for having a fisheye lens effect. That is something that as soon as you see it, you can recognize that it is a GoPro. That's because GoPros tend to shoot in an extremely wide field of view. You can adjust that by changing the field of view in camera. The new Hero 5 features a linear field of view, which I'm so excited about. In post-production, I would always have to add an effect to remove the bowed edges of the screen, and it would just hog your render times. I'm excited that that is now inside the camera. If you're shooting in a higher resolution, it is going to crop your frame, which sucks. A lot of people aren't talking about that feature as being a huge upgrade, but to me, it saves me hours of render time. So yeah, waterproofness, huge like for me. The Hero 3 Plus, you'd have to put it in a waterproof case. A lot of the time, I would put it in the skeleton case and basically 
pray that the camera itself would not get wet because I'm trying to collect as much audio and good audio data as I can. You put that thing in a waterproof case, you lose all good audio. I run a lot in the rain. I run a lot in storms. When they released the session, I got excited because it was a waterproof camera that collected audio whether or not you were above, below water or in a rainstorm and you didn't have to worry about it at all. Now with the Hero 5, I can go out in a rainstorm, collect good audio, talk to the camera, not have to worry about what sort of waterproof case I'm going to bring along for the run, all that extra weight and little pieces and gadgets to keep in my backpack. I can set it, forget it, bring it along, not worry about the weather at all. As I just talked about, audio. Yes, I love collecting footage, but I also love talking to the camera and talking about the experiences that I'm living in the moment, especially during ultra races. With the three mics on this camera, you're almost assured of getting a good clean audio signal from one of them. The camera knows to kind of pick between, but you now have some wonderful additional audio features which basically separate the audio tracks. So when you bring it into your video editing program, you can have your audio tracks on separate layers. For those of you who might be deep into editing or filmmakers, that is a really good feature to have. I am one to want to set it and forget it and not have to worry about too much post production work so I tend to try to keep things as automatic as possible especially on the audio side of things this might be a feature that I'm going to play with in the future just to collect better audio I've already run into a couple of issues with the audio in this housing picking up clicks and all sorts of various noises but I'm excited to have more manual control over the audio in general touchscreen something that my hero 3 plus did not have and the hero 4 had in one of the many thousand versions that they had a full color touchscreen on the back my hero 3 plus no, didn't have that. You'd have to use your phone. The Hero 5 now has it included, and I'm glad that it does. This allows you to not only see what you're shooting, but it allows you to change the settings on the fly without having to pull out your phone, pull open your app, connect the camera to the app, just all the settings on the fly, because we all love doing that at mile 45 of an ultra. The only thing I wish is if the screen was a flip out. That would change the game. And finally, kind of a cool feature, voice controls. As long as the camera is on, I can now tell the camera, GoPro, record video. Oh, come on. GoPro, record video. GoPro, record video. Or not. GoPro, take a burst. GoPro, turn off. It's pretty cool, but you have to leave the camera on to use any of that. Having the voice control is going to be helpful for some. Okay, so those are a lot of the features that I'm really excited about this camera that I've already used and enjoyed. It's obvious that every film that I make from here on out will utilize some footage from this piece of gear. It's way better than my Hero 3 Plus. But there are a couple of things that I dislike, things that I'm bummed about. Let's talk about those. Audio. Yes, I talked about how the manual feature and being able to separate the audio tracks is a huge plus. It is. The fact, though, is that none of the audio that I've gotten out of this camera is perfect. There's clicking, hissing, which I think is a bit of a bummer since they're trying to enhance the audio for filmmakers and for post-production folks already. They just don't give you enough control over that. Battery. This thing, like a sponge. Yesterday, I shot some footage with it. Maybe had the camera on for 30 minutes total. Used about 35% of the battery. My Hero 3 Plus would last a 100 kilometer race. I didn't have to swap the battery out once, which is incredible to me. I'm going to have to get extra batteries for this camera, and I encourage you, if you do get the Hero 5, to get at least one or two. You have a touchscreen on the back. You have all these additional features, including voice control, image stabilization, ProTune. It's all going to use additional battery life, and it was obvious that this is not going to last nearly as long as my version previously. Sluggish touchscreen. Anytime I want to change a feature, you have to press it and wait a split second for that menu to pop up, and anytime you want to scroll through any of the menus, it takes a while to get your finger to activate. It is there. It does work. It's not super fast or responsive responsive, it is tedious, and it will drive you crazy. Another reason why I like to have a camera that I can just set up, forget about, and not have to change the settings again. Just how I have this set up currently. Low light. This is a feature that this camera and all previous GoPros have not nailed yet. I do a lot of running at night, in the morning, early before the sun's up, and I wish that this camera could document those moments better. I have yet to get really good, clean, low light video footage. I have other cameras that I can use in those situations, but not if I'm on an adventure or in the backcountry or in a race because they're too big, cumbersome, which is the whole reason why I would want to bring along a GoPro. So I hope that eventually they fix the low light problems and get you a good clean video footage. So, so far that's pretty much it for dislikes with the Hero 5. I'm obviously gonna be using this a lot more. I may update this review by commenting below with some additional likes and dislikes. Before I get on with points and whether or not you should buy this camera or upgrade to this camera, I wanna talk about the Karma system. I don't have it, I have not put my hands on it, but here are my thoughts. GoPro also released a drone and a gimbal grip where the gimbal is removable from the drone and the grip. You can use it for both devices and you can incorporate your Hero 5 camera into the system. 
system. I'm excited that they created a system that can utilize all three items, the camera, the drone, and the gimbal. But there are some big things that I'm concerned about. First of all, the drone, yes, it can fit into whatever backpack that they have designed for it. It's still too big. And it folds, but I'm sorry, I just can't fit that into a backpack. I don't think people are going to use it like they anticipate. It also lacks a lot of the software features, follow me features, shooting modes, obstacle avoidance, flight distances that some of the other drones have. It's too little, too late. But the Karma Grip, the handheld gimbal that incorporates with the Hero 5, is something that I'm kind of excited about, very lukewarm on. It looks fun, it will obviously stabilize your footage, but there are some controls, features, and modes that are missing from it. Is it weatherproof? It's gonna be over one and a half pounds. It seems pretty big and awkward. There's no joystick. I doubt that there's even a selfie mode where you can turn the camera around towards you. Can you attach it to an extension pole without having to utilize the little ring at the top, which just makes the whole mounting system quite cumbersome. I just don't think that the Karma Grip gimbal is going to be great. There are other companies out there doing great things with gimbals and for very affordable prices. So I'm excited to see what those gimbals look like. If they can come out with a weatherproof version, that would be amazing. I've used the DJI Osmo as an example in the past and that thing just gets destroyed. It's as fragile as a porcelain dish. There are gonna be other companies that are gonna be coming out with cheaper, better, options. So keep your eyes peeled. Those are my thoughts on the Karma system. I did not get it because I did not think it was up to the standard that I would hope for. The camera, on the other hand, different story. With all of my reviews, I do a point system. However, that point system completely does not apply to this camera. You can't compare a GoPro to a shoe, so I'm just not going to do it. But I am going to talk about four main criteria with the GoPro Hero 5. Quality. It's a durable camera. I think the build quality is pretty solid on this thing. The weatherproofness, all the additional features compared to previous versions, the touchscreen, I think it's all good quality stuff. Features. This camera has tons of features. There are other cameras out there that have these features, maybe not all in the same package, but GoPro managed to package a lot of features into a small streamlined body that we have become accustomed to. Price. 399 bucks. I think that's a solid price for this camera. It's $100 less than the previous version of Euro 4. It's about the same price that I paid for my 3 Plus, and it is about the max price that I would ever pay for a sports camera, especially now that there are knockoffs that are doing amazing things with image quality for cheaper prices. 399 I think, is a good price if you are looking to get an action camera. If you have a previous version, you're gonna have to weigh whether or not you want the image stabilization, the linear footage, touchscreen on the back, voice control. Are those features that matter to you in your situation? To me, they did. And finally, image quality. It's obviously very good. It's comparable to the Hero 4. I'm not going to sit here and try to compare footage from both those cameras. It's good. It's solid. It gets you exactly what you want. So guess what? There's no point value I'm going to apply to this camera because it is just what I'm going to use. I'm going to use it. I could give it 15 out of 20. I could give it 20 out of 20. But really what this camera is going to come down to is it worth a buy, a try, or a why. Solid buy from me. I have a Hero 3 Plus and a session and I needed a new camera that I could take for good quality footage in all weather that gave me the best quality footage. It is what I needed so it was worth the price for me. So those are my thoughts on the Hero 5. I am excited about it. I'm using it constantly. This thing is going to see a lot of the world and I'm really excited about it. So my friends, in the comments of this video, let me know. Have you upgraded to the Hero 5? Do you have one? Are you thinking about it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments of this video. And that is it for my thoughts on the Hero 5. You'll be able to see a lot more of the footage, a lot more usage of this camera in my future videos on this channel. Keep your eyes peeled. In fact, subscribe. Subscribe to youtube.com slash ginger runner right now. If you like this review, make sure you like, favorite it, share it. And of course, I am on all the social networks. So make sure that you subscribe to all of them to find out more information about everything that we're doing here on the channel. And if you would like to help keep the channel alive, keep the lights on and the mics hot, go to patreon.com slash the ginger runner for as little as a buck a month. You basically make everything happen. That's it, guys. I hope you're getting out there training hard, racing harder, and partying the hardest, maybe even documenting some of your runs in the process. I know I am. We'll see you guys next week. Bye.